and welcome to the briefing for today, Wednesday, April 22nd. And what we're looking at is an enhanced threat down here in the south. So really our severe threat is here outlined in the red and it's that orange color is that enhanced. And then we have the slight which is the yellow, the darker green is marginal, and then just general thunderstorms is kind of that light green. So what we're focusing on really in here is going to be really some big storms. We're going to see some not as big as what was happening last week and the week before that down in the south. But we're going to see really what's going on with two different storm systems. And we're going to see a storm system that starts out like that. And it's going to end up really as two different chunks. And we're going to see them traveling in two different directions and we're going to see some kind of some colder air affecting this northern one. So I want to look at our really tornado threat for today because what we're looking at is a significant threat and that is in here in this area that is outlined. It's that hashed mark and what really what to expect in here is that there's a significant and that's down here a significant chance of tornadoes. And really, what we're targeting is right along the southern part of Oklahoma, north northeastern part of Texas, and then right along basically where these kind of states all line up. So I want to look at really what's going on with the hail, because we have the big tornado threat, and I want to note what is going on hail-wise today so really our biggest hail is going to be right in here it kind of matches that 30 percent but we do have a significant so it kind of outrolls whatever is in here so really right up and down in texas and oklahoma so we aren't really expecting too much in arkansas and into louisiana but really we do still have that chance we have a 15 percent chance because you know we see it down here in the yellow of it going on here so we will see these storms in here developing hail so those are big storms with hail that could have tornadoes with them too and then our wind obviously i'm surprised they haven't made this significant yet but obviously it's going to be within this region because that's where our severe threat's going to be so i want to look real quick at our categorical uh, and what, what happens is whenever you scroll down, we see this discussion. And so I want to see what it says specifically about the Oklahoma and Texas portion. Because while this does spread east, and then including parts of Mississippi now, across the Mississippi River, I want to see specifically what they're saying about Oklahoma and Texas. So as we read down through, it says there's enhanced risk, obviously. Uh, severe thunderstorms are expected to develop in the southern plains east of I-35 today, spreading eastward in the Art Lot, Texas, and lower Mississippi Valley in the evening. Very large hail will be possible in the southern plains with wind damage and a tornado threat likely. So we see that likely right there. And really, we're expecting that to spread eastward into the lower Mississippi Valley. So as we go through, really what we're thinking about is there's some moderate instability. It says right here is the edge of the moderate instability into the northwest Oklahoma, extending eastward into the stronger low-level flow over northeastern Oklahoma. So that shows that there's going to be development coming out of Oklahoma. That's our big thing is development that is going to be moving out of the Oklahoma and Texas area. So I want to pop down here real quick. I'm going to highlight a few things in red that I think are going to be important. So the tornado threat may begin in central Oklahoma. So central Oklahoma is where we could see that tornado threat. And it's going to be near the surface low. And then it will develop southward. And that's going to travel into east central Texas with the developing storms. So we're going to see it traveling south. So what we can expect is the storms that are going to be going to the south are going to have the strongest chance or the highest chance of tornadoes. So the tornado threat is expected to become maximized with eastward moving complex of storms and the art lat text during the afternoon. So what we're going to be looking at and focusing on is the storm system that is going to be moving into Arkansas, Louisiana, and parts of Texas. There is going to be a northern part, but what we're going to focus on with that is what's going to occur kind of at night with that but our big thing is let's focus on the afternoon then the nighttime so we're going to first focus on what really to expect going on and kind of focus on 
what's going to happen at, in the afternoon and then at night. So let's go ahead and pop up and we're going to see, we're going to go and check out the temperature first because I want to point something out that's going to lead to really kind of an interesting look at what to expect for today. So we go to the warmest time of the day, the 21Z hour, which is right around kind of 2, 3 p.m., uh, depending on where you live. So I want to draw a line because I want to focus on where they're expecting this. So once again, just a reminder, our biggest severe threat, our moderate, was right in here. And our moderate, our enhanced, pardon me, was right in here, and it included this part. So big important things about this this is the middle of the afternoon where they said that storms would be in the south be severe and then ones that are traveling from over here in texas so i want to focus on two things that i'm going to draw here this along with this and then what's happening up here so what's going on here and we're going to focus on one part at a time this little triangle form here of the temperatures. So what this is, we're seeing warm air being brought up from Texas and allowing a dry slot to form over Oklahoma. So it's really pushing those upper 80s, because see right here we have 77. Travel a little bit to the south, we have 83, 84, 85, 86, 87 even. Just a few hundred miles, not even, maybe 50 to 100 miles. So big things are going to be going on in this area because when we have the dry slot filing in that allows for daytime heating it's a big thing for developing of storms so it's important that we see this over parts of Oklahoma and in the parts of Texas because that's going to show us that there's a dry slot forming that's going to allow formation of storms really here and then also here so we're going to see it on both corners of Oklahoma so then the next thing, I want to focus on what this is here. We have the really 60s and low 70s to upper 70s over here. So we really see this open area here. This is going to be the area of kind of that cooler air that's going to be with the storms because it's going to use up some of that heat in the atmosphere. And we're going to see some of that kind of be left behind. And right through here is going to be where our thunderstorms are at. That we're going to look at thunderstorms specifically that are affecting right in here and then I'm going to actually redraw that circle because I want to include parts of southern Oklahoma and Texas so right in here and so it's important that we see this kind of cutting through here because we're going to see the warm stuff back here that's going to be feeding energy this way we're seeing winds move down here and we're going to see it feeding into the storms that are going to be occurring over here so we're going to see important thing about this we can kind of see that there's a tail here that's showing where this wind direction is going a big important thing with this is when you have this where it's going north and then bam and then bam we're going to see rotation in this direction so that's going to mean that there are spinning storms so then finally I want to point out on this temperature thing this outline here and this is going to be our northern storm system I want you to keep that in mind because note this was our trough that developed and then it actually dove a lot deeper than that over time it ends up down here but really let's just think it's that uh, but I want to develop what's going on with this so we're going to see on the radar that there is going to be a storm system that is going to be cored really right in here right in here there's going to be a uh, storm system that's going to be moving really that direction and then we see some moving that direction they're both moving in very similar directions but the big important thing is what does this kind of funnel area here have to do with this and we're going to see storms develop right along here because this is colder air so any storm system that's moving into the Kansas Missouri and even in the Illinois part is going to die off it's going to be dead by the time it even reaches here but this storm system down here is moving into a very uh, temperature rich environment very indicative of storm structure so a big important thing is where does this go and how does this being here and traveling this way affect storms down here and up here? So now it is time that we take you to the HRRR because I want to note what is going to be occurring. We're going to put it at the 10Z time because that's going to show us 
the latest in the day as possible, and it's going to be mostly accurate. We see the temperatures being very similar here. So I want to see what's going on composite reflectivity wise first, and then we're going to dive into what these storms are doing. So I'm going to start out at 12 Z. So this is the morning hour. This is going on right now. So we have really two storm systems that are forming here, and we have one storm here and one storm here. And really what we can expect is that these are going to be pretty severe, at least this one over here is that northwest one. So I want to track these two as we go through the day. And we see that there is some kind of reaching out going on, but I want to focus on the whole country scale with what's going on here. So we see it 14Z, 15Z, 16Z. Okay, so I want to, I want to stop here. So this is going to be at 12 p.m. Eastern Time or 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time here. So we see that this was the southeast storm system. It has now died. But we do note that there is this system that has now formed. And I want to note how you can see there's an obvious cutoff of severity. Everything south, so down here, is severe. Everything north of here is just some rain. So I want to keep tracking this, and then we're going to dive into the exact region itself and focus on what these storm structures are going to look like. So we see we're going to go in central time. So this is 12 p.m., 1 p.m. is a great example. So I'm going to pop back to 12 p.m., and I want to note that these cells are just forming at lunchtime. And then we have this group of systems. I want to note that there is still that cutoff there, but now it kind of tilted a little bit. If severe is not up here, it is going to be down here. So really, I want to focus on what's going to happen down here. And so they talked about that there is going to be, uh, you know, the severe storms forming in Oklahoma, but then traveling down to Texas. Well, that's where we see this, that kind of pipe that is allowing kind of instability to travel up and down through that system. So now I want to go into the afternoon and look and see how these storms develop. And I'll get a scroll down and let you see for yourself what's going on. And we see these very severe storms that are forming on both systems. And I'm going to say, I'm going to double check once ahead of this. Yeah, th so this is the most severe time. So this is looking right around early 1, 2 p.m., maybe 3. We have this storm system and this storm system. Now note where that cold air was that I mentioned. It was in Kansas and then in the Missouri. It was like right or in here. Now note where all these storms are dying off. They're dying off right on the Kansas border. So we see this line of severe thunderstorms that forms really through here. And it's going to be traveling in kind of this direction while this storm is traveling in this direction. So we're going to see a split in energy here. But this is our big severe storm. And so we're going to focus on once again here, going through the hours, just the middle of the afternoon, really seeing what's going on. So we're going to keep passing through and just checking and looking just so you can get a visual picture in your head of what the entire country looks like. And we do see kind of that warmer air making its way into parts of the Ohio Valley at this time. So you can note that really, really at the end of the day, so we're going to see this at 7, 6, 7 p.m., there is kind of a mess down here. And so I'm going to put a line through this of what is our north and our south system. And really, our north system, anything up here is still developing, but our big focus is going to be here and then here. And that's going to bring us severe threat down in here for tomorrow. But our big thing is, as we go into the nighttime hours here, is really focusing on Louisiana and then kind of what kind of really random stuff happens up here because we are on that warm and cold line which is showing us what all is going on and you know with our warm and cold that's where we get that kind of spin in the atmosphere which is very very indicative of storm convection especially the nighttime hours you can have this so we really see at uh, 10 p.m. central time that there is kind of this swooping motion that occurs through here and that's actually developing a low that's going to spin throughout here so really, we're going to see, at this time, we're going to see a cell here, here, and then all the way through here. So really, we have a big system that is going to be occurring in here that's going to allow us to see 
really just kind of a severe threat in the night hours, but not expecting anything massive for this amount of time. Then we're going to see right around midnight is our biggest time here for our night threat because we're going to see this developing and then traveling. So that's our last look at what's going to be occurring, and I did not mean to click on that. So I want to look. Obviously, that they, these are all supercells, but I want to go ahead and look back, and we'll look at the 16Z time. Because this is where we see, I actually want to step an hour back, because this is where we just have some random cells down in here of just kind of some rain that's forming. And we have these well-developed supercells through here. And today we're not going to look at the supercell composition, because no doubt there is going to be supercells in here. And I want to go from our continental look down to our regional look. And I'm going to focus on the south central U.S. because it has... Our target range on here and I want to once again highlight what our severe enhanced threat really is it's gonna be in here and we're gonna watch storms that are gonna form really I want to look in here oops I want to look in here and really up here so this is our really this is about our 15Z time, so we're looking uh, just in the morning hours, really, is our big focus. Uh, so we're going to see this at kind of 10, 11 a.m. here. We see that there are a lot of cells, and each individual cell is kind of a supercell with this. So we can expect that these are going to be very strong storms that are going to be occurring. And I want to look an hour ahead. And we see that the first cells down in Texas, right in here, form. And that's going to be important because this is the leading line here. And once again, that kind of triangle of warm air is forming right through here. We have a tunnel right in here of really in, uh, instability, that unstable air that's going to allow for big time thunderstorms. And I want to watch the curvature of some of these cells up here because we see these little cells that are all producing all the way through here and all over the place. What I want to focus on over the next kind of few model runs What's going to be occurring rotation-wise? Because we can see there's a supercell here, adorable little supercell, but that could be dangerous. We're going to see hail, obviously. We're not even going to look at hail because our big hail threat was specifically in here. But I want to focus on there's going to be hail in all of these storms in here. Anything that is in here is going to have hail. So really, I want to focus on our tornado threat because obviously there's going to be wind. But what is our chance of tornadoes with this? So... As we go, we're going to look and track some storms, and we're just going to highlight some certain cells that are going to be producing some big stuff. And really, I want to focus real quick. So this is this is an hour later. So we just saw some little streaks that were occurring through here. Not much going on. Now we have all of these supercells, all of these supercells that are forming. We see them across east and central Texas. And we see some very big ones occurring. And we kind of see, you can kind of see the little tails on them as they're forming. You can kind of see what direction they're all moving in. I want to also focus on what is going on up here. We see these little streaks of supercells that are forming right along this line. So we're going to see some severe storms in kind of Tulsa area of Oklahoma. And then up here in the panhandle of Texas, we could see some big ones. But that's a kind of a cluster of supercells. I want to focus on down here the individual supercells also. So really around here, we're going to see some severe storms occurring in the northern part of Oklahoma. But then as we travel, we're going to see supercells developing. And as we go, we're going to see some clumping of the backside ones and the front. But really key things going on here, we're seeing those still lines of supercells. And that's what's going to be dangerous. And we do see some supercells forming around here, potentially some big hail occurring. But really, there is kind of some rotation occurring in some of these cells at this time that you can definitely see like in here. We can see some... Even it here is still a little bit of some. I'm not saying that that's going to be, you know, any big rotating tornadoes or anything. That's showing that these supercells are rotating supercells, some bigger supercells. And so we're going to see some really tiny dots forming that are going to end up guiding this storm off in this direction while this is moving really that way. But we're going to have to note there is kind of a bridge that is forming between these right in here I want to focus on where this goes here here and as it travels I want to focus on what happens with that and really we see it kind of break apart but 
if we look at where all that energy went, it went into this cell system right here. And this is our first sign of rotation in a bigger storm right here. We see kind of that hook happening. And that's where our spinning low could develop later, but at this time it's not really a low. It's going to be, to kind of, you kind of see that hook. It's a hole right there. And so that could be a tornado threat over West Oklahoma. But we're going to have to check and see. It's not the highest threat in there. But our big threat at this time is you can see a white dot. I put a black dot on it right there. But it is right in here. I'm going to circle it. Well, that's actually a curving storm in there. So that is showing us that we are having some pretty big rotation in some of these storms. And I want to see if I can get closer, actually, at this time at a local level. I think we can. Because I want to show you what's going on in these cells. So in these supercells, we see that they kind of form a line that is going to kind of come right down through here, even kind of hook up through here. Well, we see that this is rotating, and it's probably going to be a pretty big hail core in here. It's going to be a very big hail producer. But I want to note spots of rotation. We do see some rotation right in here that we can see. We do see a little bit in here in this kind of cell. And obviously anywhere in here can, but our biggest areas are in here. When you see the cell like this, where you see two lines of rotation, that shows that there could possibly be a tornado right in there. And I want to look real quick. I want to click the sounding data for that, if we can in a little bit, to show you what that's going to look like. because. There's a very high chance, according to this model right now, that we could see rotating storms that could produce tornadoes. We could have twin tornadoes somewhere in here. Now, that's not saying that there definitely is. It just looks like that these are either connected supercells or they are rotating cells in a line. So I want to focus on kind of that bigger area again. I want to go back to our little regional. And I want to click on those two cells. And I want to go up and... I want to go ahead if I can. Okay, it's not letting us click on that. So we're going to go to NAM at this time. I want to click on the environment. Okay, what the heck. Okay, it's not letting me click on it. But we can obviously see from this that there is going to be some big cells out of this. And that's going to be occurring, when was that? Was that 16? Go back up to our right time here. Just hate it when you lose track of where you were at. Okay. Okay, so it was here. So that's that's going to be your environment there. So I want to go ahead and try to find one where it's going to let us click and see. Maybe it won't because with my recording software, what I'm using here. Let's go ahead and check out our SIG door because that might let us see. So we can note that we're in that same area there. There is a dot right in here of kind of some higher up energy we could see it was right here and then over here too and so that's what we're gonna have to check out a little bit that's kind of a tease for what to look forward to with this but I want to go now and look at our cape so this is our I'm gonna to flip to unstable cape because I want to see our areas that we're gonna see the most severe storms so flipping back to around lunchtime we see all of this energy we see a ton of this energy down in here and we kind of see there is a kind of a, a really cell of it here. But I want to note where this is, is kind of pointing. We see it here, and so it's targeting this way. And a really key important thing is we saw those cells developing in here. So the fact that we're seeing this kind of puncture through the area is going to be key. And so what we're going to see is, is as we go up here, we do see that there is an energy also in here that's allowing storms to kind of develop we saw those kind of scattered ones through there and so we do see it split and it is a weaker threat up here so I'm just going to track this throughout the day so we're going to see what's going on with it and we see that there is a very high very 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 high cape through here and this is I want to see how high it gets I want to go to our maximum through here can we get higher I think we can get a little bit higher Okay, so we have, you can kind of see where that low is developing in this because you can see it right here. 
really we see that swirling action starting from here and going back. That's what's going to produce kind of low pressure later on. But really what we're focusing on is we see kind of a dry line form but of cape. We see it form right through here where there is zero out here. And so in front of this line, we see there is some very high readings. And then we do see some up through here. So really, we those storms that are developing up through here. They they've already used all the energy at this time. They're they're just going. They aren't. They don't have a ton of unstable capes. So they're just going to be some bigger thunderstorms. So our key is looking at how much cape is down through here. And tornadoes do form at 500 cape. And our outbreak that was in Mississippi and Alabama uh, a week ago and even two weeks ago, the cape levels were in the low 4,000s. So that means that they were kind of dark purple where they turn from red to dark purple. So we see readings all the way up here where it's like light and then they go to like that magenta color, that weird type of pink. That's when you know these are gonna be some big storms. That's where this is, all these storms, I wanna draw these again, they're all forming here, right in front of this line. So they are being fed by this group here. And while normally this means super big storms right there, we're seeing a lag today in Cape that is feeding. You can even see there's probably a cell there, some cells up through here. It's actually feeding the stuff from behind. So that's why these storms are going to be so dangerous today. So I want to go ahead and look, and our Cape gets up to almost 6,000. Almost 6,000. We're almost maxing out. That is right here. We see tornadoes really from here. Oh, that was a horrible line. We can see tornadoes anywhere from 500 on. And really, we don't count these always as going to be the big storms. But whenever I'm looking at storms, I say that anything from here higher, from the 2,500 higher, has the most. And I'm going to say there's definitely going to be a tornado if there is anything in here. And I'm going to say there's a tornado outbreak if anything is in here. Well, the fact that this is being fed into supercells is showing a huge amount of uh, energy going into these storms. And that's absolutely nuts looking at this. Like, just look at this. This is crazy. So we're seeing energy that is off the chart, and it is just feeding and feeding, and it will feed all these cells out through here that I showed you. And that's going to allow some big cells to form, some big storm systems, and that's all going to be traveling off through here. So I want to look at our SIG tour, and we're going to kind of track through it because we're going to see where all this is going. And really, we see kind of a mess, and we see it all in here. There's all that potential. But I want to highlight when and where we're going to see that highest chance. And nothing is going to be happening in here. Nothing, really nothing's going to be happening in here. There's going to be five, six. Really, this cell system that's going to be traveling through here is going to have it. And I want to flip ahead to where was it? Right here. So where those two little hooks were in that storm system were at the 7.0 and even in the sixes and through here. We saw them through here and through here. And when we look at this, we do see there's a little bit of that curvature of that in there. So there definitely could be some tornadoes in there. We do even have the potential up through here for some of these cells that are forming on the back side of this storm system to be tornadic. So that's why we have that potential. There is that split, though. And this is where we're going to see right through here where we have the south system and the north system. That's where we see that definite split. But there is still energy feeding the backside of those storms. We're seeing that tornado potential on the backside, not the front of those storms to the north, but only the, that backside. So then the south, all those storms are going to be severe. So then traveling kind of forward in time, we're going to look and we definitely see that split occurring right through here. But we see some massive energy forming and just a crazy amount of it. And while some of this is capped in some regions, we see just enough especially up in here, that any storm that crosses down through here, or because the sets are cut off, they're going to be cells in here, and they're all traveling this way. They're being fed along the line by these. And all of these are going to be big time severe storms. So that's why we can expect, even going into the night hours, why we see so much cape. And we see this hole here because these storms are using up the cape. So anything that's still forming around this line is going to really be a huge effect of what's going on. And something just fell off my wall. That's weird. Um, and 
So it's going to be kind of a big danger overall to what's going on. And so that's showing us the whole day and going into the night hours of really some dangerous storms. They're going to be really forming right in here along this line and moving. Still, I mean, we see that those storms out here are still going on too. So even when storms die off, we're going to see more develop. And that's our big key for today. So that actually does it for what we're expecting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flash it back to our kind of outlook here, categorical. And so this is our really in region right here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to our red. And I want to show you where I think our big, biggest chance of storms are going to be at. So I want to note that kind of dry line stays here the whole day. It's forming and it's going to allow storm convection in Texas all the way through here. Now we do have a storm system up here, but that has no energy with it, zero. Now it does have a tail back through here, and it there's kind of a cutoff here. So we have our big severe stuff for Oklahoma at the end of the day. So we do have the severe stuff obviously moving this way in the morning uh, into the early afternoon, but our afternoon, we're really seeing the biggest storms developing in here. Uh, anything left in here. So our big focus is going to be on the nighttime and what's going to be occurring in the, I should say nighttime, the early evening. So dinner time and on. So really we could even say 3 p.m. So we do have the systems that are up here, but we're going to say that that is not our big cells. We're going to have cells in here that will be forming overnight, but our biggest threat is going to be really down here. And so I'm going to highlight the area that I think is most important and was going to be the most severe. So normally you think, oh yeah, it's the bullseye, so we would say somewhere up here. I'm saying that personally, I think we're going to have the most storms that are going to have a tornadic potential down here. I'm gonna. The reason this is such a big bullseye, and I will make a smaller bullseye, is this is our evening time. The problem is there's so much energy that is feeding from this dry line here. It looks like that it's definitely going to be slotted somewhere in here. You can't tell, though, where in there it's going to be. We are going to have cells out here. So I want to go through and I want to draw our afternoon. So I'm going to draw different times. So really, so our around lunchtime, I'm going to say our most severe storms are going to be kind of the OKC metro area. That's going to be our most severe storms is in there. So our highest chance of potential is going to be somewhere in there. I'm not saying there's going to be tornadoes there, just our highest potential. Then our kind of... 3 p.m. time, our biggest threat is right in here. So I will write a number. So I'm going to say 12 p.m., 3 p.m., and then I want to focus on 6. 6, I'm going to say, is probably in here. And then I'm going to say the night time is the rest of this. It's going to be the rest of this whole thing. So once again, from 3 p.m. on, we're going to see the biggest threat for storms traveling in this direction. But specifically, I think our biggest threat is going to be anywhere in here. So really, watch out if you're in East Texas, Western Louisiana, right there on that border, because we are going to see some very big storms traveling through your area. You're going to see supercells, and they're all going to be traveling along this dry line. And note, there is just dry air back here. There is nothing happening out in front of this, uh, out behind this, I should say. But really, along this dry line, we have energy, nonstop energy that is feeding these cells. So even if ones die off that are over here, more little ones are going to be developing, and then they are going to grow to this size. So everyone stay safe today, especially if you live in that enhanced area. Remember, if you live anywhere along Texas, Louisiana, your biggest threat, and that's where I think the bullseye is going to be for today based on storms, uh, is going to be really, it's going to be between 3 and midnight. You can expect that our highest percentage of the most tornadic time is looking right right about uh, it was a 19 z time so looking for you at around 19 z that puts us between three and really six o'clock that's our highest time for severe storms in east texas and then traveling along to that border you can expect it uh, really between four and seven is when that's gonna be entering the area but those storms are gonna be dying off and we're gonna see that that's kind of second wave occurring of the big time supercells and even maybe a squall line or 
too that could be formed. So just stay safe and really stay informed of your local news stations. Have your NOAA weather radio on and have a safe plan because uh, this could be a nocturnal threat too. There's no doubt about that. Anywhere around there, it could be a nocturnal threat. So stay safe and note that if you live anywhere really in here, expect storms from 3 to midnight. And that's going to help you and it could save lives. So thank you all again for watching and staying with us this entire time on this weather briefing here on Wednesday, April 22nd. I hope you all have a safe day and join us tomorrow for tomorrow's forecast and tomorrow's briefing because there's going to be a very big severe threat in the south. We'll track how this energy from today is going to affect this stuff tomorrow, but we'll affect, uh, we're going to talk about that in tomorrow's forecast. Thank you all again, and have a good and safe day.